Thinking about augmented reality is actually pretty ridiculous. Today we can 3D model pretty much anything we put our minds to, and now we can superimpose it into our real world. Augmented reality is pretty awesome, and today it's really easier than ever. All I want to do in this video is show you how you can make a ton of money as a 3D modeler without even knowing how to code. Hey 3D people, my name is Leah and I'm a 3D artist based in South Africa. I want to talk about some really cool third-party augmented reality apps that have shot my projects up a lot and helped me to create these augmented reality solutions in a really easy way. Basically how they work is you can model like you've been modeling everything else and then you can upload them online, open up the app on your phone and just have the AR model ready to go there. So now as a 3D artist, I don't even need to know how to code and I can offer augmented reality as a service. So I was approached by someone I know uh, who needed to make an AR app for printers. So the whole idea behind the exhibition space was to have these printers in AR format so that people can take the app home and see if the printer would be able to fit into their home office space. So here are pretty much the three steps that I followed to get this project done. First, I did what I knew what to do and I just modeled the printers in Blender. Obviously beforehand, I went and I measured things and I took photos of all the different images and then I went ahead and modeled it. Optimization basically included deleting any excessive or extra polygons um, in the model and also decreasing the amount of materials I was using so that your user can basically download and use the model as efficiently as they can so if they have a really old phone and a slow phone that it would still be able to work quite well. After I went and optimized the whole model and made it as fast and light as I possibly could then I was probably ready to upload it. I'm actually going to jump into Sketchfab quickly. Hey guys I'm down here and basically I'm in my computer right now and I've got a blender file open of a downlight that I recently modeled and I think I also use this in my other augmented reality tutorial, which is cool. So if you want to download this model, more than welcome. Just go in the description down below and I'll pop a link to where you can download it. Basically, I just want to use this as an example of how to upload something to Sketchfab. Uh, Sketchfab is free to use. Uh, some of the third party apps are not. So if you are someone who doesn't really want to pay for anything right now and you just want to try things out, then Sketchfab is probably for you. I just want to show you how um, enable the Y mode so you can see exactly how heavy it is. I could probably go and subdivide a few of these things just to make it a bit lighter. Um, but right now I'm not going to do that. So one thing about the optimization part is that you should delete as many polys as you can. So if you really want to get fancy with it, you can go ahead and make a high poly and a low poly and then bake those together. If you're not too sure what that means, don't worry about it. You don't have to do it. Um, I think this model will work just fine. But basically there's two main categories for optimization for Sketchfab and that is deleting all your polys that you don't need and also having the least amount of materials. So instead of going and, this was my reference image down here, um, going and making a material for all the different individual components in this, I actually just made it one whole mater big material and I um, just used this image reference to make the material. So if I go into my rendered view, um, you'll see I've added some reflectiveness to it to make it look slightly more realistic. Um, not everything is perfectly smooth, but it kind of gets everything done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this to an FBX. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to select everything here, say file, export, FBX. I've already got one there, but let's just maybe call it downlights AR model. And let's just have a look at these settings. So I'm not going to limit it to just the selected objects because I don't have anything else in my scene. So it's not really necessary. I think these are fine for now. So I'm just going to say export FBX. Cool. So I've already gone and I've made a free account. Um, you guys can go and do that if you haven't already. I think the only difference between the free accounts and the paid accounts, um, I know one difference is that with a paid account, you can make duplicates of models that you've already uploaded, which is pretty useful um, if you just want to upload the same thing with a few changes or keep all the material settings that you do, which you'll see now. 
Um, and also there is a limitation to as how many models you can upload. So for small projects and you're not really looking to do it seriously, you can probably get away with having a free account. But if you're looking to offer this as a service like me, then you probably want to look at buying the pro account. So you can see I've already uploaded one of the um, models already, as you can see it's over there, but I'm going to show you how to upload a new one. So I'm going to say upload. And right now I can drag my FBX in here. So I'm just going to go back to my FBX, drag it in. I'm going to say upload files. It'll take a while depending on how optimized or not optimized the model is. Cool, so once you've uploaded it, you should be able to play around with the 3D settings. And they've got some really nice 3D settings here to help make your model look a bit prettier and also work better. Then you can go into lighting and affect how your object is lit. Right now I have an HDRI loaded. And you can go ahead and play around with the brightness if you want to. Then you can get to play around with materials. Um, and with materials, you can upload the baked materials if you've baked a material within Blender, which is probably better than adding a whole bunch of different materials because that will slow your model down. If you have displacement maps or normal maps, you can also upload them over here. And they've actually got a few channels that you can play around with. So you can get pretty good materials with this, especially if you bake. You can also add annotations, which is something that I did use for the actual printer object so i added annotations for where the screen was for where you load the paper for where um the papers get loaders where the fax is where the scanner is uh, the usb ports and so on i added annotations for all of that so it's pretty cool once you've loaded it um, on your phone you can go ahead and look at those annotations and view a little bit more information about that printer then you get to set the scale, but as I said, this isn't so accurate. Um, so you need to set the scale according to how high a person is. And each of these squares I'm assuming is about a meter by meter. So this light is obviously way smaller than it is over here. And when you load it into AR, it wasn't very accurate. Cool, so what I wanna do is actually show you the printers that I made. So here's the printer, as you can see, um, the solution that I got to get away from the scale problem was to actually add a two meter by two meter virtual box around the model so that the person would have a better idea whether the object is being superimposed properly or not. Um, I also added a baked animation in the screen so that you could see where the scanner was and how that worked or the photocopier. And then you can also see how the annotations work. So the different annotations gave you a lot more um, information on the object itself and I put it in English, Sesutu and Isizulu because obviously I live in South Africa and that was the market that we were attracting. So as you can see these third party apps are super cool and super awesome. If you'd like to learn how to make your own AR app without relying or paying for these third party apps then you can check out this other video I made which is pretty much a tutorial on how to make your own AR app using Unity and Vuforia. If you guys found this helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on any other cool tips.